Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Fix my little pretty hat. Uh, today's Daily Recap is for Friday, April the 28th, 2023. Friday, April the 28th. Well, uh, really, there was not that much good movement today. This is not going to be a very long recap. I think Comment Corner has more than what I really got, right? Anna called in Dr. Maddox. I do like seeing Dr. Maddox. I, I do. They need to bring him back for, for Jordan. Because I think him and Jordan kind of was oh, right there. Him and Jordan kind of had a thing, if I can recall correctly. And I don't know. I kind of saw some sparks there when they saw each other today. Okay. Um, and Jordan is there because Jordan's trying to find answers. Look, she's the chief of police and she knows she can never find out nothing. She has to go to everybody else to get information on the case. So um, they finally, between Jordan, Andre, Anna, Dr. Maddox, they really come up with the fact that it's a it's a pathogen because Connie Co Holly found it in the notes down below. Um, and first they were like, okay, we got to alert the WSB. And, and Andre's like, uh, no, no, we don't. Because Jordan's like, yeah, let's get him involved. No. And they're like, well, why not? And so he says, think about it. There are four people. We've got Spencer, Ace, Trino, No Brick. Four people you're trying to rescue off of that island. If the WSB gets wind that Victor has gotten his hands on the pathogen, what do you think they're going to do? Even though they're saying eight because they're counting Victor and his men, right? But how do they know how many men Victor has, right? Um, what do you think the WSB is going to do? And they thought, oh. and Anna goes, neutralize the situation. They're going to bomb the island. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're going to blow up everybody. Which, okay, you know what? When you deal with eight and eight versus eight million or eight billion, okay, that is kind of what you do, right? Tough choices. So anyway, they decide, no, 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 we need more time. We got to, you know, let them rescue uh, our Port Charlesians. <laughs> Get them back here. So uh, Jordan agrees to stall a little bit, you know, to give the rescue team some time to rescue because let's face it the mid oh you know what you that's the rest of them that's the eight the four hostages and the four rescuers that's the eight okay now that makes sense sheila oh, what? daily recap ladies said my name man <laughs> that makes sense La daily recap lady yeah the rescuers for them and four hostages that's the eight okay <laughs> so now we have um, minor scenes between Brick and Dex. Dex is at the, the where the meeting is supposed to be, and he's put a webcam there. I'm surprised Dex didn't come back in and sweep the room, but I guess he had probably uh, a Brick didn't sweep the room, but Dex was there, and I guess he probably was supposed to have done that, right? And so. Um, he ends up placing the device when Dex has to take, not Dex, Brick has to take a phone call from Sonny. Um, and then he's like, he hadn't done nothing. So what we have happening back at the, let's talk about the island where the hostages are. Now it's cold. Curtis has a bald head, y'all, bald. Any bald head in a cold environment has to have a beanie on and the hoodie, right? That's all out of context. Laura's cold is like the chick you'd have your hood on from your hoodie, your bomber jacket. Valentine, none of them have their hoods on and it's cold, snowing. Okay, we already know it is stage stage studio 10, right? But anyway, so they're they're kind of been searching and they realize the direct path is straight ahead but they're kind of searching the little area and Drew and Valentine are away from Curtis and Laura searching around and they're like, okay, but they hear some men talking, coming. So Drew beelines it back to cover 
stupid Valentine is still right there kind of by this rock formation. So Drew comes back. It's like, get out of here. And he pulls him away. I'm thinking, Valentine, what were you going to do? You're, you are a better agent than that. There was no cover there. Why he was there, I don't Why he stayed there, I don't know. And then the fumbler dropped the sat phone over there. Now, he had not been able to get reception, but he did walk away from everybody and he did find some kind of reception in an area. I don't think he got a call out. Um, but he said, I had I found a little reception, but he didn't think the phone had reception. Well, guess what? After Holly and Anna and Dr. Maddox and Jordan, you know, they really find out what's really going on and they all have their little plan to give time. That's really all the plan is. Um, Holly says, I'm going to call Valentine. Hopefully he'll pick up because they need to know what they're walking into. So she's going to call him. Well, of course, the phone that he thinks has no reception that he dropped in the clearing, the men were walking away to go back to the base and they hear the phone ringing. They hear the phone ringing. So now Drew, Curtis, Valentine are going to have to take him out, right? Because they can't take the sat phone back. I mean, <laughs> the, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a hot mess come Monday, but we're going to have some action come Monday. It's going to be a good hot mess. That means we're getting action, everybody. Okay. So then we have, you know, I only really prepared two pictures today because that's all that was going on. Before Sonny gets here, he's still at the wedding with, Michael and Willow and Ned is standing there, right? Everybody else is outside eating on the patio. Well, Ned, uh, I mean, um, Michael is, come, you know, talking to Willow and she, he's like, I just hate the fact that, you know, our, our wedding day got ruined. And she goes, oh, it's not ruined. We had a little snag, but uh, we're married. It's not ruined. And I'm like, you're right, Willow. You are Mrs. Michael Corinthos. So they were worried about um, Carly and Sonny walks back over because he had walked away to call Diane. He says, okay, Diane says that they are questioning Carly. They're looking for Drew, you know, for the insider trading. And Willow says, oh, will they be coming after you too? Because you were working for Aurora at that time. And I'm thinking, he's still working for Aurora. What do you mean at that time? He's still working for Aurora. And so Michael says, Sonny says, no, Michael's name did not come up, just Carly and Drew. And so Michael says, well, I'm worried. I'm worried about my mom. So Sonny says, look, you stay here with Willow. Enjoy the, you know, your festivities. I'm going to go to the precinct to check on your mother and Jocelyn. And so Michael looks at Sonny, you know, because see, oh, we can't be mad now, right? We can't be mad because Sonny just came back with a report. Sonny's going to go to the GCPD while you stay with your brand new wife. Okay, so we can't be mad at him, Michael. So Sonny leaves and... Um, Michael stays there and talks to Willow and then Willow ends up going upstairs. Um, I think Brooklyn helps her upstairs because she's going to change her clothes because um, now things have winded down. By the time we get back, we have scenes everywhere else. Then we come back to it. Willow's gone. Michael out and out accuses Ned. Outright accuses Ned said, because that's what you threatened to do in the beginning. And Ned is like, do you really think I would do something like that to your mother on your wedding day? And if you think that, 
then you don't know me at all. And Michael looked at Ned and said, then I don't know you at all. <laughs> and he goes, Michael, you are getting dangerously close to saying something you're going to regret. And Brooklyn is back down. And I think at this point, Willow's back down. She's now in jeans and a zip and a hoodie, like a sweat top. And so Brooklyn says, come on, daddy. She ushers Ned away. Willow sits there and she's talking to Michael. You know, Willow, she will always calm down everything. And they decide, and she goes, look, let's finish the rest of our day. Back with Wiley and Amelia. Let's sit down. You know, let's. So he says, okay, okay. You know, so actually Carly calls him. But I'll get back to that. Carly calls Michael, says she's okay, says, you know, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I'll get back to that. So Brooklyn takes Ned out. And Ned is like, can you believe Michael had the nerve to accuse me of doing something like that? And Brooklyn looked at her father and she said, because that would be right out of the ELQ playbook, daddy. And he looked at her and she stormed away because she's thinking he did it too. And Ned didn't do it. She's thinking, she's like, yeah, you would. Look, had Tracy known about it, she would have done it. But she didn't even know, right? So, <laughs> so now, meantime, at the station, they're questioning her. Diane is there. And they're like, you know, this is about you and Drew Kane and him sharing uh, sensitive corporate uh, uh stock information or pre-IPO or whatever, pre-merger information uh, with you. you know, it's come to light. You were intimately involved with him and, and you made a seven-figure investment in stock days before the merger was supposed to happen. And so where, and they're like, where is Drew Kane? And Carly looks at them and, and they slide the picture of when Carly, they were at the hospital where Nina saw him. The picture Nina took, obviously. She obviously took the picture, right? Where Carly is hugging Drew. But the funny thing is, if you truly look at the picture, she's crying. It was a, because <laughs> Willow, they thought she was dying. And so they slide it over to her and she looks at it. Diane slides it over to where she's at. And she looked at that. She goes, are you kidding me? Is this all you have? They are extended family. Same family. They had just found out a family member was diagnosed with a terminal illness. Since when is it against the law for family to comfort family? And they just looked at Diane. And then that's when they brought up, well, she did. This. And she goes, still, no, 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 still, still. Circumstance, mm -mm, still no. This is not a case. And so they asked Carly again, again, where is Drew Kane? Carly says, go to <laughs> the H word, right? And they looked at her and Diana's just sitting there. And they said, are you going to instruct your client on the proper way to answer a question? And Diane says, she answered it in the manner she saw fit. You know? So she says, uh, can I have 10 minutes? So, you know, because they said, we are in our rights to hold you for 24 hours without pressing charges, right? So Diane says, well, since it looks like you want to put my client on a staycation, uh, give us five minutes so we can go get a coffee, have a little coffee break. So she and Carly get up and go out and Jocelyn is there, mom, mom. And, you know, she's hugging her and she goes, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay, baby. And blah, blah, blah. So they, she, Carly tells Sonny, you know, they're looking for Drew and, you know, on, on the inside of, she goes, who else knows? And he goes, what do you mean? Who else knows? He says, uh, I know Olivia knows, or, or maybe Sonny asked her, who else knows? I think she asked him. 
She goes, did you tell her? He goes, no, I didn't tell anybody. He goes, you know, I know, you know, Olivia knows. And I'm thinking, obviously, Jocelyn knows because you're talking about it in front of her, you and Drew, right? That's all. So she goes, well, they're looking for Drew to, you know, move forward with the case of blah, blah, blah. Sonny goes, oh, you know, excuse me a minute. So he walks away. Jocelyn comes back up to Carly, you know, and um, saying, mom, you know, whatever, they're chitter chattering. So Diane walks over to him or standing there. And all of a sudden the agents come out of the room and they said, and Dante's standing there too, <laughs> right? And they said, Mrs. Spencer, Miss Spencer, you're free to go pending our investigation. And Diane says, oh, and what pray tell prompted this action, this sudden swift action? Said, we just got a tip that Drew Kane boarded a plane to Maui. So, you know, we will be in touch. So Diane says, well, let's go to the appropriate office and file the proper paperwork, gentlemen. <laughs> you know, so, because uh, remember when I said Britt, Britt was in, I mean, Brick was with Dex and he had to take a call from Sonny. Sonny said, I need a favor. Wild goose, you know, so they, wild goose chasing. Because what Carly said, they cannot find, they cannot find Drew because Drew's trying to get Lisa Ulbrick back so that Willow can have her transplant. So Sonny created a diversion, right? So Sonny walks back in the room because after the guys tell her Carly she's free to go, Jocelyn is looking at Carly. Carly's looking at Jocelyn and she goes, they're like, why do they think Drew's in Maui? And Sonny comes walking in the room and he walks over to Carly. She says, what did you do? He goes, I took care of business, right? And she goes, Sonny, you did not have to do that. Like, you know, you didn't, I had, she didn't have nothing under control. She didn't say I had this under control, but she goes, I, and he goes, look, Carly, no matter where we are, what's going on in our lives, oh, we are family. And you know, family takes care of family, one another. I made sure they have time to rescue the hostages. And Sonny walked away. And Jocelyn's just standing there looking like, oh, see, nothing snappy, Jocelyn. Nothing stay out of our business, Jocelyn. None of that. No. See, Carly just stood there. She didn't say nothing else because come on now. Just two weeks before when she found out Sonny had, or three weeks, the extra guards in front of his house. And he told her about, about the attempt on his life at the warehouse. What was the first thing out of Carly's mouth to Sonny? What can I do to help? Mm. First thing, what can I do? That's how they are. Sonny didn't have to ask, what can I do? He made sure that was taken care of. Wild goose chase, buying them some time, which is good which is good. I honestly don't think this will, this whole SEC thing will be too, too deep. You know, Willow will be saved by then and then we can handle anything that comes what, come what may. But um, that was pretty good. Sunny came through to the rescue, to the rescue. And then he headed over to the warehouse for the Pikeman meeting and of course, Pikeman sent his his men. Pikeman didn't show up, or her men. We don't know if Pikeman's a man or a woman. And it was Dex and Brick, because if Pikeman's people are saying, "Where's your boss?" and Dex and or Brit, I don't remember, said, "Where's yours?" <laughs> you know, obviously that's the mo, right? We come in first, and then Sonny said, "Well, I'm here now." And he walked in with his man, looking like, okay, so where's yours? So we're going to pick that up on Monday, right? We're going to pick that up on Monday. So it was an interesting show. It just wasn't jam-packed, action-filled show, but it was an interesting show, okay? 
So let's go to Comic Corner, Comic Corner. Nina needs needs some help. I mean, physically and mentally, but my girl Tracy needs to stop spilling tea about Carly. Um, boy, about Carly making her feel bad about herself. Um, Tracy doesn't make Carly feel bad about herself. Carly could care less about what Tracy has to say. Carly can care less, really, and that's the truth. Tracy has never, none of the quarter mains have ever been able to make Carly feel bad about herself. And then um, Isby says, I agree, Nina has no one. People can't see the wrong, can't see the wrong Carly does except Tracy. I love Tracy calling Carly out. Um, tell me, who have you ever known Tracy to like? And don't say Luke. Tracy and Luke will be at each other's throat on any given day. Is this Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday? They just have this weird love for each other. But half the time she's sniping at him. He's sniping at her when they were, you know, both on the show. And then other than that, who? Tracy and who? Who's Tracy liked? Tracy snipes at everybody. Even her own kids. Ned, oh my goodness, Ned can do no, no right. Thank God Dylan stayed away. You know, thank God Dylan, you know, speaking of which, they need to bring Dylan back. They really do. Because they could have a good storyline with Dylan. He was he was one of the different quarter mains, the good hearted. He actually the is the actor that plays Liam on The Bold and the Beautiful. And then um, Ispy says, uh, Nina is, excuse me? Let me reread that. Nina is wonderful with an exclamation mark. Everyone did Nina wrong. Exclam Are you joking? <laughs> okay. Look, we all can have our own favorites. And that's the truth. I'm actually the one joking. There are people that, there are Nina fans out there. And there are Carly fans out there. And then there are people that can't stand Nina and Carly. And then there are people that can't stand Elizabeth. There are people that can't stand every single person on that soap. And then there are people that like. So that's what makes it wonderful. They have these diverse characters so that it appeals to somebody. Now, Dacia says, Nina will go crazy when she sees the picture with Sonny and Carly and their children and grandchildren. Was there a picture? I didn't. Uh, 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 I don't remember seeing a picture with Sonny and Carly. I there's a picture with Carly and her children and grandchildren. Sonny, his children and grandchildren. I never saw a picture with Sonny and Carly in the same picture. Um, Nina will go insane. Uh, Michael and Willow, and there and they're in the picture. Alone, along with Bobby too. Sonny is not, I, I didn't see that. If anybody else saw a picture like that, let me know. Cause I didn't see a picture where all of them were in there. Not Sonny, not Sonny's clan and Carly's clan. Nope. Dacia says Nina better leave Sonny's home before he gets back. Uh, before Sonny gets home, it won't, uh, Sonny won't look at Nina the same way Nina is delusional. Sonny will not know right off the bat that Nina did that. He's not going to know. It's going to take some time for, for that to be figured out. That That's not something that's just, oh, everybody knows that Nina didn't know. Uh, it's it's going to take, she's going to be scrambling. But guess what? It is going to come out. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it's going to come out, but it takes some time. Now, Michael says, I'm going to get you for cursing at my favorite. There we go again. Another Nina fan. And boy, I had some words coming out of my mouth. Anyway, like I said yesterday, I hate the storyline. It's going to end terrible for my girl. I know. Man, and I can't wait, Michael. <laughs> Nina needs to brace herself and be prepared to give up Sunny. And Weeping Willow, um, 
besides she's a Spencer now anyway. <laughs> she's a Spencer woman now, right? Um, she's a Spencer now. Anyway, Nina needs to own her revenge and finish off Carly. Finish her off how? Carly's uh, got it coming for years of transgressions. Yeah, and I do believe she's had her years of setbacks and the transgressions coming to light and being disliked for a while. Nina is going to go through all of that, Michael. Because see, Carly hasn't just been like every bad thing she's done. People just didn't care. No, Carly's gone through it too. And gone through divorces because of it too, right? Yeah. They need to bring Nail back for Nina and help to help her with her revenge plot. That would be a good storyline instead of this lopsided rivalry. Great recap. And then Tulip says, Nina was in a coma for 20 years and her children were sold off uh, like baggage. They all need therapy. Tulip also says, I'm team Nina now. Maybe Carly could have a heart to heart with Willow. She could tell her um, what she did to Bobby. Bobby hated Carly and look at them now. So here's my question. Why is it Carly's responsibility to sway Willow about the bully that tormented her? Car it has nothing to do with Carly. And Carly has not talked Willow against Nina. She has not. As a matter of fact, when a lot of the bullying was happening, Carly was the one standing up, shielding Willow from Nina. I mean, has everybody forgot that? It is now not Carly's responsibility to make peace. Carly has not said, don't you know, don't ever trust her. Don't ever like her. She's never said that everybody, you know, so I don't, I, you know, and I, it's definitely not her job to make peace. Why would it be her job to make peace when Nina's constantly doing everything to tear it apart? Right. Anna Rihanna says Nina dug her grave of revenge um, and blamed Ava. I know you told me to do it. <laughs> you know me uh, delusional, delusional as usual Carly may be um, have to endure a little pain but the fallout will be with Nina for a lifetime great wedding gift for Willow I know right from Nina great wedding gift just amazing thanks for the recap and Cindy says Drew lives at the Q mansion Carly happened to be there for the wedding. Because remember I said, why would they come there looking for Carly? You are right, Cindis. <laughs> they were there looking for Drew. <laughs> that is where Drew lives. That would be where they would go looking for Drew. I That had not dawned on me. Kim says, I was thinking Nina is bad because she makes trouble with everybody. I hope Sonny doesn't forgive Nina. And I hope Sonny ends up with Carly. Um, to be honest, I never liked Le Nina, and the wedding was very nice. Now let's hurry up and get back to Victor and get the bone marrow done so Willow doesn't die. I know that, right? Send us. I don't recall if they gave an explanation for my... I know. Where was Monica? Monica lives in that house. Even if Monica was not feeling well, Monica, Monica could have been wheeled and just sat there to witness her grandson's wedding. Where was Monica? Uh, and look, they didn't even have little, um, what's uh, Olivia's son's name? Oh my God, I know his name like the back of Leo. They didn't even have little Leo there. What's going on with that? Um, it's her house. <laughs> you said, look, Monica lives there. It's her house. Alan gave it to her. I know we all know that, right? Tom says she bought um, Aurora stock, not EOQ. EO did, Q. did I make a mistake and say EOQ? Because it definitely was Aurora stock. Ron, there was no investigation into it, no arrest warrant, 
Nina thinks she uh, won't get rattled, but um, wait, I'm on oh, rat it on, <laughs> rat it on. Uh, but the sad part is Nina will lose everything, family, friends, um, almost, and most of all, Sonny. He, as he goes to Carly's aid, which he's going to do, he's already done it, but they, that's what they do. Lisa says, remember the SEC was looking for Drew. Yes, yes, Lisa. I did. That did not pop into my head. I think they stopped by Carly's residence and no one answered. Um, so then they went looking for Drew or well, who knows? They could have went to Drew's first. Uh, but no, they said they're also looking for Carly. So they probably were at her house first. Uh, they mentioned Carly's name. Uh, they got a tip um, that they were doing insider trading together. Uh, they don't know Drew is out, has left town. Michael, Ned, and Olivia um, are likely to be interviewed since they had knowledge of it. Uh, Nina doesn't know that. Well, they aren't likely to be interviewed because Nina doesn't know everybody that knows. Well, she knows Olivia knew, right? Lucy says, Carly Spencer is a hypocrite. If she... Uh, goes back on her new life plan after all she dropped the corinthos name uh so leave sunny corinthos behind too ah, carly will be back with sunny within a year that's just the way they roll absolutely the way they roll look at here edward quarterman could do how much dirt out there but yet him and lila were the staple weren't they mm, just saying him and lila were the staple uh, Marcia says, Nina should have thought out better and told Ava her plan. Well, she didn't. I still like Nina and Carly. I still like Nina and Carly. Okay. Both came um, from my all-time soap operas. Oh, called Guiding Light. Oh, is that where the actresses came from? I didn't know that. I uh, still like Nina because she really does know Wait, she really doesn't know how to be a mom. Also, many folks in the city have done wrong, including Carly, Sonny, Michael, Ava, and the list goes on and on. Sonny will not forgive her and Nina will pay for her actions. I bet if the roles were reversed, Carly would have done the same thing. Eh, who knows? Carly can be spiteful. She sure can. Yeah, she sure can. Uh, Cindy says, I love the guiding light until the... Peacock or Peapack years. Um, it was like telling, wait, it was like trying to watch TV on a roller coaster. Well, I don't know what the Peapack years are. But prior to that, it was a great soap. And NK Rose says, um, I sense beef between Christina and Jocelyn. I definitely see a rivalry over Dex um, or anger when Dex doesn't betray Sonny for Christina. And DB says, Joss and anyone else who doesn't support Sonny can kick rocks in Christina's eyes. <laughs> Deborah says, good for Ava. She told Nina, Nina that she was delusional in a made up world. Tell the truth. Um, you did it for revenge. And, and, your and on your daughter's wedding day. Yep. Ava should have told Nina, um, you're more like your mother than you think. <laughs> Nina needs a doctor. She, she's been messed up for years. Yes, she has. Thanks to her mother. She made Carly the substitute for her mother and hates, um, hates she had to, she had for, and the hatred she had for her. Just no, Sonny will be mad at Nina. Wonder if they will be over. Yes, they will. And actually what they've done with Nina is they took the character of Nell because Nell could not say one sentence without saying Carly's name in it. And they melded that character into Nina, which I can't stand because Nina was not like that. But Nell completely was. And they melded those two together, which was ridiculous. And Anna says, here's the plan. Nina gets pregnant for, and Sunny forgives all. 
Come on, another million subscribers. Join the fun. And Medora says, Nina went through early menopause. Britt told her that years ago when Nina tried to have Franco's baby. Yes, she did. She went through early menopause and she cannot have any children. Annette says, um, longest wedding in history. Maxie, get a life, please. Uh, Sheila says, I hope they don't drag out the Nina turning Carly in and drew. Well, they didn't drag it out, Sheila. Nina blames Carly for any and everything. She refuses to learn that she is her own worst enemy. Carly doesn't act out of jealousy, spite, and revenge against Nina. Carly actually acts like Nina doesn't exist in this life, <laughs> really. You know, why should she? Carly's living the good life. Why would I care about that one over there? You know, she doesn't have to, right? And then a uh, great comment, Sheila. I'm going to kind of move on because we have a heck of a lot of comments today. Uh, Dacia says, Nina doesn't need, um, doesn't need to anywhere, must be need to be anywhere near Willow because Willow gets sick when Nina is around. I don't know about get sick. Nina just wears on her nerves. She never, um, she never changed at always blaming Carly. Nina needs to see Kevin for some professional help to get over her obsession with Carly. And Lena says, Nina won't realize she turned into her mother by similarly ruining her own daughter's life uh, with her selfishness. The only one that can torture Nina more than Carly is Madeline. Yeah, bring that be back. Madeline is dead. Uh, Nina's losing her mind. Um, she observed, she deserves to be with Heather. Sunny is all about loyalty and may, this may be the last straw that breaks the camel's back. He enjoyed being with his children and grandchildren. I doubt he'll choose Nina again. Yes. Uh, let's see. We talked about how Sonny was looking, you know, gushing over. Well, he really likes being around his family. You know, and quite frankly, he if Carly would have let him live two lives, he still would be right with her just sneaking around seeing Nina. <laughs> you know, but Carly wasn't having it. Uh, Skononophos? Skononophos. Skononophos. Um, it drives me crazy when people act like everyone hates Nina and she's all alone. Nina will be fine. The only people who treat Nina coldly are those people who love Carly. Um, uh, and that's not a lot of people. Olivia, Josh, Michael, Bobby. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you forget Sonny, Jason, uh, there's somebody else out there. <laughs> Carly, yeah, there's somebody else out there, right? Now, oh, but oh, look, look. Now we named some folks that like Nina. Valentine, Lizzo, Curtis. Oops, oops, but she snitched and is trying to put Curtis's best friend in jail. Let's take Curtis out of there. Sunny, oops, oops, but she snitched on Carly. Let's take Sunny out of there. Maxie and Ava. So in reality, we got Valentine, Lizzo, Maxie, Ava, four. So in all counts, I think Carly is still a little bit ahead. <laughs> okay, ooh, don't, let's not forget about Brick. That man like him some Carly. <laughs> Okay, uh, DB says she's not alone uh, and lost major points to keep Sonny far away from his grieving Pam family. And Espy says, Ava kind of put that in Nina's head to do. Yes, she did. Um, now she's playing innocent. I can't wait until Michael, Dex, and Josh get theirs. Ooh, okay, you know what? I'm almost done. Uh Lynette says, where the heck is Monica at this wedding? No Diane, no Max, no Spinelli or Alexis. They all watched Michael grow up. Where were Jason's kid? I guess this was a no kid wedding except for Michael's sisters, right? Um, uh, 
weren't they close to Michael? Isn't Jason, uh, since Jason was always around them, it's weird. Where was Charlotte? Well, Charlotte doesn't really know him. Willow adored her. Nope, Willow did not adore Charlotte. That was Nina. Charlotte was a self-entitled brat that Willow was, you know, letting her parents know she was bullying. Remember, Willow, Willow got fired for that. Willow and Charlotte have never been close. Willow doesn't dislike Charlotte. Willow just has nothing to do with Charlotte. Um, and then uh, Sonny's always saving Carly and Carly's always in danger. Carly's not always in danger, but she does make, make some messes, right? She's been a hostage while pregnant, not her fault. Husband cheated with his lawyer, not her fault. Kids were kidnapped, not her fault. <laughs> yeah, okay. Carly has been pivotal in the GH storyline. Yes, things have happened, right? But they always find that we can make stuff happen to Carly because Carly's going to emerge okay. Um, Nina just lost access to her. Oh, poor Nina. She just lost access to her grandkids because there's no way Michael's going to allow it. I think everyone's doing business with Nina I think everyone doing business with Nina will walk too. Sasha adores Willow, so I doubt she'll forgive. Uh, she does love Willow. Sasha actually loves Carly too. Or should I say strong like of Carly too, right? Carly's never done anything to, I mean, Car Carly's been very, very supportive of Sasha, even when Sasha was with Michael, right? But Sasha loves Nina. See, there's a difference. So Sasha will be upset with Nina, show her dislike of, she let Nina know she doesn't like what she's done. But in the end, Sasha loves Nina like a mother and she is going to stay on Nina's side. That is my prediction. Um, Dante is the detective. Um, if Nina in trouble, he won't run to help her before finishing lunch. <laughs> Uh, LOL. Olivia definitely won't work for her. And then it says, why is Olivia acting like Tracy is in her house? That's Tracy's, uh, that was Tracy's house first. That's never been Tracy's house. That's been the quarter main mansion that when Alan had it built, everybody lived in it, right? And then Monica, Tracy was there, allowed to live in the family house. It was never her house. And then Alan gave it to Monica. Um, it says, if Olivia had a problem, Ned could buy her her own. They own, I mean, their own house. Olivia married into wealth and turned into a snob. I don't like it. Olivia's not a snob. Never has been a snob. Because you want to know what a snob wouldn't be doing? running around with an apron around her waist and making food for an entire wedding and serving people. Olivia is not a snob. She really is not. It's just, just Tracy comes into the house talking crap and insulting. Tracy's very, very insulting with her snide comments. She looked at the food and said, ooh, picnic food yeah okay she did everything but oh oh what's cooking in here yeah she did everything but that that's tracy uh annette says yes i thought the same thing annette what what are you thinking uh carrie says uh i like i said nina is crazy in the in the head um and the head witch, she needs to say goodbye to Sonny and their relationship once he finds out what she did to Carly. Yes, yes, yes. And woo, Carrie, you wrote a whole book there. Everybody go read that. Um, Lena says she refuses to accept Willow's part on her decision to keep her diagnosis a secret. I know. And get early treatment, too. That was all on Willow. She really was. Sandy says, Ava told delusional Nina the truth about um, crazy Nina. Crazy Nina thinks she did the right thing. Nina doesn't realize Drew is trying to rescue Liesl for Willow. So while she's trying to hurt Carly, she's hurting Willow. Her children and the whole family 
I want to see Sonny go all the way off on Nina. He has uh, to see. He has to see what he gave up for this crazy person. Well, that's it for Comment Corner. Comment Corner, thank you so much for the comments on this daily recap of General Hospital. I'll be back Monday. Let's see what happens.